We're continuing with the topic of understanding the prayer and we are covering the Sunna actions of the prayer. And again, the Sunna actions of the prayer, these are the actions of the prayer that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did. So we do them for the reward of trying to be like him. But if for some reason we are not able to perform these actions, your prayer is still accepted and Allah will not punish you for it. And I hope this is clear to Brother Muhammad and everyone else. Allah does not punish us for the Sunna things that we are not able to do or the Sunna things that we don't do. Instead, Allah will only punish you for failure to obey him, for deliberately and intentionally disobeying him. Does everybody understand? We don't worship the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We worship Allah. We try to emulate the Prophet because he was the best example for us. But we don't worship him. We don't worship him. We don't worship him. We obey him in what he commanded us to do because the things that the prophet commanded us to do is the same as if Allah did, but we don't worship the prophet. We worship Allah. Does everybody understand that? Okay, so this is what we're talking about. Muslims need to learn the difference between the pillars of the prayer. The pillars are the obligations that must be performed. Otherwise, the prayer is not accepted. And then we have sunnahs of the prayer. These are the actions that the prophet did. And we should try to do them if we can. But if you can't for some reason or you don't know about them or whatnot, your prayer is still accepted. And this is the third session of the Sunnah actions because uh, again most of the actions of the prayer are Sunnah and today we're going to pick up where we left off with the bowing the bowing now I want you guys to understand that when bowing it is a Sunnah to make your head the height or the length of your head equal to your hips you will hear some Muslims being real fanatic about that. They say when you bow, put your hands, which is true, put your hands over your knees, make the back straight, and try to make your head equal to the hips. Well, guess what? That's a sunnah. You may not be able to bend over like that and make your head equal to your hips. When you bow, your hands should cover your knees if they can. But the height of the head is a sunnah. Okay, everybody understand that? We have a hadith, whereas uh, one of the companions would bow with his arms separated. His hands would be on his knees and his fingers open beyond his knees. And he said, this is how the prophet used to bow. So again, you want to bend over if you can, put your hands over the knees. And your hands can be, your fingers can be open. But if you can't make your head equal to the hip because of it's too far over, don't worry about it. Also in another hadith, another companion states that when the prophet bowed, he would be straight. His head wouldn't be neither up nor down. It would just be, you know, moderate. And he would place his hands on his knees as if he were holding them. And also we have the hadith of Aisha. She said that, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he bowed, his head would neither be too high or too low, but it would be right between those two positions. 
If you could put a cup of water on the back of the prophet when he bowed, then the contents would not spill. So you want to try to make your back straight. You want to bend over if you can and touch your knees. Let your hands cover the knees and your fingers can be wide. But as far as worrying about the height and all that, that is a sunnah. So again, guys, we have to be very careful uh, when we're teaching Muslims how to pray. Some people can't bend over like that. Okay, what about this? What if you're a person that when you do bow, you can't touch your knees? Is your prayer accepted? Yes. Some people have bad backs, guys, especially you get old. Look at this picture of this man here. You know, he, he, he can't touch his knees. He's trying. Allah will reward you for your effort. Okay. Also, another sunnah is the words of rem the words of remembrance that you say when bowing. This is a sunnah too. So what does that mean? That means if I do pray and I don't say those words, guess what? My prayer is still accepted. You know, so it's a sunnah. When you bow, we say Supana Rabil Adin. Supana Rabil Adin. Supana Rabil Adin. This is a sunnah. If I bow and don't say it, my prayer is still accepted. Does everybody understand that? So say for example, we have Sister Pamela. She's a new Muslim. She's learning how to pray. So she's saying Supana Allah Alhamdulillah La ilaha illallah in every position. When she bows, she says the same thing. Subhana Allah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah. That's fine. Because Subhana Rabil Adin is a Sunnah. Okay. Also, guys, just like when you're praying, before you recite the Fatiha, you can add a supplication before the Fatiha. Well, guess what? If you want to add a supplication after saying Supan Rabil Adin, you can. We have a hadith whereas the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would bow and he would say, Oh Allah, for you have I bowed. And it is you that I believe in. And it is you that I submit to. You are my Lord. You are my hearing. You are my sight. You are my bones and nerves. And what is carried by my feet are for you. So here this goes to show that not only can we make our own supplication before reciting the Fatiha. But we can also make your own personal duo, your own personal supplication when bowing too. Also, we have another hadith where Aisha, the wife of the prophet, she said that whenever the prophet uh, would bow or prostrate, not only would he say, but he would say, oh, Allah, forgive me. Oh, Allah, forgive me. Oh, Allah, forgive me of my sins. So again, guys, um, uh, 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 not only do, can you say glory be to Allah, but you can also seek forgiveness of your sins when you're bowing. You can seek forgiveness of your sins before you recite the Fatiha. How many of you knew that? Most of you were told, oh, you just say, Supan Rabil Adim, that's it. No. Again, so many Muslims wonder why they don't get their prayers answered. We make all this supplication after the prayer. This is wrong. The prophet made his personal supplications during the prayer. When he was bowing, when he was prostrating, and even before the Fatiha, subhanAllah. Allah. And also, guys, not only is the Supana Rabil Adim a Sunnah, but also the words you say when you do rise. Simi Allah, Huli Min Hamida, Rabbana Walak Alham. This is a Sunnah too. So what does that mean? That means if I don't recite upon rising from my bowing, Semi Allah, Huli Min Hamida, my prayer is, is still accepted. And if I don't respond with Rebina Walak Alham, my prayer is still accepted. That's a sunnah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, upon rising from bowing, he would raise his hands and say, Semi Allah, Huli Min Hamida. 
And then when he brought his hands down, he would say, Rebina walakulham. But it's a sunnah. So if a person doesn't say that, their prayer is still accepted. And now that brings us to another big question. Just like, unfortunately, you find Muslims arguing as to whether or not we should recite the Fatiha aloud behind the Imam. Well, they also argue as to which comes first, the knees or the hands when you prostrate. Well, guess what, guys? Placing the knees on the floor before the hands is a sunnah. So not everybody can do that. Maybe you got to put your hands down first or you're going to fall and break your neck. So it's, the choice is up to you, whichever is easier for you. If it's easier for you to go knees first, alhamdulillah. But if going knee first is hard, you have to use your hands, alhamdulillah. Does everybody understand? So yes, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he would place his knees before his hands, but he was able to do that. But if you can't, don't worry about it. Okay? Also, there's a difference of opinion about how one should stand up from the prostration after the first or third rakat. Some say that one should raise the hands from the floor first and others say the knees first. Again, whatever is easier for you. We have to stop arguing and fighting over stupid things in this religion. Things that don't make or break us. Allah is not gonna ask you about getting up off the floor. He's not gonna hold you accountable for coming off the floor with your hand first and your knee. But what he will ask you is, why come you didn't prostrate when you were able to? We have to understand and learn what the pillars of the prayer are and make sure we're doing the pillars instead of arguing and fighting over sunnahs. Okay? And also, just like saying uh, Supana Rabil Adim is a sunnah, su saying Supana Rabil Ayla when you are prostrating, that's a sunnah too. In other words, your prayer is accepted whether you say Supanarabil Ayala or not. Okay? Does everybody understand that? And also, a lot of people ask, how many times should I say Supanarabil Ayala when I'm prostrating? Well, uh, some of the scholars say three times would be good. Okay? But according to the majority, the minimum amount is just one time. So if I prostrate and say, Subhana Rabil Allah, Alhamdulillah, that's good. But if I want to go three times, I can. Because guess what? It's just a sunnah. It's just a sunnah. Allah ain't going to hold you to account for not saying it. It's just a sunnah. And also, guys, it's also a sunnah to make your own personal supplication while prostrating. Just like the prophet would make his own personal supplication before the Fatiha, he make it when bowing, he also made it while prostrating too. And again, it could be any supplication you want. Why? Because when you prostrate, this is the closest position that you take before Allah. It's the most humblest of all positions. So this is why the prophet told us to increase our supplications when we're prostrating. If you want that new job, if you want that new car, if you want to be forgiven of your sins, this is the best time to ask for it while you are humbling yourself in prostration before Allah. And there's many, many, many different hadiths out there that show how the prophet made different personal supplications while prostrating. So you should make your own personal supplication when you're prostrating too. Again, so many Muslims pray incorrectly. You see them making personal supplication when the prayer is over. That's wrong. It should be during the prayer especially when you're prostrate because this is the most humblest of all positions. Okay? And also, big question. This was a question that Isdahar asked me about yesterday. The placing of the feet 
What about this, Sister Layla? I can't put my right foot up. So what? That's a Sunna. So don't kill yourself. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to sit with his feet uh, spread out, the left foot down, and he used to sit on it with the right foot up. But that's a hard position to do. I can't, I could never do it. If you can't put your foot that way, so what? Okay? We have a hadith where as Aisha tells us that the prophet would lay his on his left foot and keep the right foot upright. But this is a sunnah. We have another hadith where one of the companions said we asked Ibn Abbas about the positioning of the feet. And he said it's a sunnah to position your feet that way. And we said good because we think it's too hard for a person to do that. He said, well, don't worry about it because it was a sunnah of the prophet. It's something that that's the way he said. But if you can't sit that way, don't worry about it. And also, how many of you were told, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, you can't sit on your toes. Guess what? Ibn Umar tells us that when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam rose from the first prostration, he would sit on his toes. So again, if, if the best you can do is to sit on your toes, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, again, Allah has enjoined the prayer upon us, not as a hardship. Not everybody can sit the way the prophet did. Not everybody's able to lift their foot, keep their foot down. You might have foot issues and can only sit on your toe. Have your toe. Well, if that's the way you can sit, then alhamdulillah, that's how you sit. Because those are all sunans of the prayer. What you want to try to do is try to avoid sitting on your heels if you can. Okay, but if you got to put your toes down like the young boy in this picture is doing, alhamdulillah, your prayer is acceptable. Okay. And also, the words of remembrance that we recite between the two sittings are also a sunnah. And that's when we, again, when we say supana rabil ayala, supana rabil ayala, supana rabil ayala, you know, that's a sunnah. You can say them once if you want or three times. And also if you want to add to it, you can. Because the prophet used to say, Supan Rabil Ayla. And then he would say, and oh Allah, have mercy on me. And grant me good health and guide me and provide for me. So that goes to show if I want to add another supplication to it, I can. If I want to make a supplication before the Fatiha, I can. If I want to make a supplication when bowing, I can. If I want to make a supplication when prostrating, I can and should because that's the most humblest of positions. And if I want to add another supplication when I'm in between the two sittings, I can. Again, all your supplications, your personal supplications should be within the prayer, not outside of it. Okay? And so thus, we're going to stop right here for today. This was the bowing and the sitting. I mean, the prostrating and sitting. Tomorrow, we're going to continue with more sunnahs. We're going to talk about the tashahud. We're going to talk about what's a pillar and what isn't and all of that tomorrow. And again, you know, as you guys can see, all of the hadiths I'm giving you are authentic. They're taken directly from the, I'm giving you the source. There is no true scholar of Hadith who is going to argue or fight me on anything I'm teaching you. I am teaching you the way the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam prayed. If you are able to pray like him, then you should because it brings about great reward. But if there are some things that he did during his prayer that you are unable to do, such as the sitting of the feet and all that, don't worry about it. Sit on your toes if you can. Okay, or however is easy for you. On that note, we'll stop right here for today. Sooner, Sooner. 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 Sooner.
Protectors of the Sunnah Sunnah Fathers Protectors of the Sunnah